Welcome to your fifth episode in your ZK app series. This video, we're going to be talking about how to use local blockchain. This will drastically increase your development speed because you'll be able to do everything locally. You won't have to spend a lot of time waiting for compiling, verifying, or sending things to the network to be confirmed. Additionally, you'll be able to create test Mina out of thin air and have complete control over it. I have mentioned that if you want to change the smart contract, say you wanted to add a different value here, this will make all proofs invalid. However, if you wanted it to be valid, let's say this was an authentic change to the smart contract code, you would need to redeploy with a new verification key. Now, there is a process to do this, which I can link to, and this is really handy if you want to update your contract that's deployed on the testnet. But before we even get to that point, it might be helpful if we could do everything locally. So let's go ahead and change this back to two, just to keep things as they were to start. And we will actually create a new file here. And just to keep the other one separate, we're going to call this one interact2. And this is going to do something similar, but now it's going to work with local blockchain. We'll have pretty much all of the same imports as the previous example. So these are all gonna come from snarky.js. So we're going to start by first importing various things. And then next we will import our smart contract code. And now if we compare this to our original interact, we set the MENA network to some GraphQL proxy. What we'll do instead is say const local MENA dot local blockchain. And in here you can pass an object which will be whether or not proofs are enabled. We'll just start this with true. So this is going to be as similar as possible to the previous video. But later on you can change this and that'll save time. Then similarly we'll say MENA dot set active instance passing in local. Now you have the ability to generate test accounts. You can just grab one from the test accounts array. So for example, index zero or index one to grab a different one. So let's go ahead and say index zero. And what we'll do is we'll assign this to something so we can reference it later, but we're going to destructure this object to grab just what we want. So specifically the private key and the public key. And what we're gonna end up having is three accounts, which may be confusing at first, but let me explain. We're going to have the deployer account. This will deploy the smart contract. We will also have a sender account, and this is going to interact with the smart contract. But thirdly, we're going to have the ZK app account. And this is going to be the ZK app address we interact with. So we'll say the actual ZK app. But in this scenario, we're gonna pay the deploying fee with a different account. Because we can generate accounts on the fly, it's not a big deal, it doesn't add any extra work for us. And it's generally recommended when possible to use a separate account to deploy the smart contract instead of using the ZK app account itself. It's a minor detail, but basically it's just one extra step we're going to do. We're gonna end up with three accounts. So for this first account, we'll call it the deployer account. So we'll rename the private key to deployer key, and then we'll rename the public key to deployer account. So key is going to refer to the private key and account's going to refer to the public key. Very similar for the second account. So instead of deployer key, this one is going to be the sender key and the sender account. And this is going to come from local test accounts one. These will be pre-funded accounts. If you need an account that doesn't necessarily need pre-funded, there's another way you can do it. So I'll show that one here. So we'll just say ZK app private key, and that'll come from private key dot random. And I'm actually gonna make these const here. ZK app account. And that's going to come from ZK app private key dot two public key. Pretty similar to what you saw in the previous lessons. Now we'll get a reference to the actual ZK app by saying new, which is going to instantiate our code. So we have the add that we import here. You'll need to say new add and assign it to something so that we can invoke things on it like compile. This is where you're going to make the association between the code in the add file and the actual address for that app. So you'll pass in the ZK app account. Now that we have all of our accounts set up, we should be able to say things like add.compile. That will compile as we've done before. And remember, I tend to forget to put await. Oh, this is important. So let's go ahead and say console log compiling. 
So that will allow us to create the zero knowledge proofs. But because we're no longer working with the network, we don't already have a pre-deployed account. We're doing this all locally. So what we need to do is we need to deploy a smart contract. So let's go ahead and create a transaction. Let's call this deploy transaction. And this will come from await mina.transaction passing in the fee payer, which reminder is going to be the deployer. So we'll say deployer account and then a callback function inside of this callback function. We will say ZK app dot deploy. One other thing, there is a step you need to take if you want to be able to pay the deployment transaction fee from another account besides the ZK app. In this case, we want to use the deployer account. You will say account update dot fund new account. And we're going to be using it from the deployer account. So now we need to sign and send this transaction. So we'll say await oh, deploy transaction dot sign. And then after sign, we can say dot send. The sign is going to take an array of any keys that need to sign for this, which is going to be two because we're working with two accounts, the deployer account and the ZK app itself. So we'll say deployer key and the ZK app private key. Once this is deployed, we should be able to interact with it, such as grabbing the state from it. So we can say let num be ZK app dot num dot get. And then we'll console log that. So you should see some similarities to what we were doing in the previous lessons with some slight differences. So let's go ahead and save this and let's run and build. Now, instead of interact, we're going to say interact to. And you can see we eventually got that initial value one. So that's how we would read data. Now let's talk about how we could update the state of the ZK app. So let's go ahead and make a new transaction. We can just call this one transaction now. And we'll say await mina dot transaction. And this time we can imagine interacting with this from this other account, the sender account that we have here. So this is what's going to send an update to this contract. So we'll pass in the sender account and the callback function of what we want to do, which is zkapp.update. And this is specifically lowercase here, so not the uppercase variation. Then we're going to want to sign and send. However, because this is an update, we're going to need to prove it. So we'll say await txn.prove. We'll do a console log here. Proving await txn.sign.send. And this time we only need to pass in the sender account, but specifically it's key, so sender key. All right, so that is how we prove, sign, and send. And this is going to be instant since we don't have to wait on the network, so we should be able to read the value of num right away. So we could say zkapp.num.get and do a console log updated state and say num.toString. Let's go ahead and close out of that with control C and rerun. This is going to go through the same process. Now, keep in mind what's going on. We're deploying this every single time, so it's a clean slate. We're not working with the previous smart contract. So you can see we get the value one when we read the data. We create a proof of our valid code execution, and then we get the updated state of three. This shows the end-to-end -end process of working with local blockchain. You can now go in and modify your smart contract code. And since every time we run the code, it's being redeployed locally, you can quickly change your smart contract code to test out those changes. Hopefully that gave you a good introduction to local blockchain. I'm sure we'll be using this for the upcoming videos. Stay tuned for the next one.